Even at my feet, I can't feel the those surrounding me. I can't hear the sound of nations rising up. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. I can't walk down this dark and painful road. I can't face every fear of the unknown. I can't hear all God's children singing out. We will not be overtaken. We will not. Upon you, 
be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Let's sing that again. Lord, favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you within you he is with you he is with you in the morning 
in the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing he is with you he is for you think about this as we're singing these songs don't just sing the words apply the words to every portion of your life may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going and your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 song is true for those who are in Christ we now have peace through God through Jesus with God what an awesome reality we don't have to sing this song as begging this is our reality and that is awesome I used to think for all this to happen for his favor to be on me for his presence to be with me for him to be for me I thought I had to do everything right and it was a prison Finding out that I'm made righteous by what he did on the cross has set me free. Anybody else? <laughs> Father, we love you. As we go forth in this worship, I just want to pour my heart on, out into you. We love because you loved us first. I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. 
Cause I hear your invitation To let it all go I see it now I'm laying it down And I know that I need you I run to the Father Fall in the graves I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father Again and again and again and again saw my condition how to plan from the start your son for redemption that price for my heart and I don't have a context for that kind of love I don't understand, I can't comprehend All I know is I need you I run to the Father, I fall in the graves I'm gone with the hiding, the reason the way My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend So I run to the Father again and again well i run to the father i fall in the grace i'm done with the hiding no reason to wait my heart needs a surgeon my soul needs a friend so i run to the father again and again and again and again Again and again and again and again My heart has been in your sight Long before my first breath Running into your arms Is running to life from death and I feel this rush deep in my chest Your mercy is calling out Just as I am, you pull me in And I know I need you now I run to the fire, I fall in the grace I'm done with the hiding no reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father Again and again Well, I run to the Father I fall in the graves I don't know it the height No reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend so I run to the fire again and again say I run to the fire fall in the grace I've done with the hide the reason the way my heart needs a surgeon soul needs a friend so I run to the fire again and again and again and again Sing that bridge part. My heart has been in your sights. My heart has been in your sights long before my first breath. 
running into your arms is running to life from death and I feel this rush deep in my chest your mercy is calling out just as I am you pull me in all I know I need you now I run to the Father I fall in the grace I'm done with Hiding the reason I wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again. forget your kindness. That we will run to you and not away from you in the midst of our struggles. Can we just close our eyes and just shut ourselves in right now in his presence? Put our eyes on Jesus. Whatever we're going through, whether good or bad, he takes good care of us. He holds us in his arms. And we will make it through to the end. The sparrows not worry about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. A tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Let's sing that again, the sparrow. Think about these words. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the season, the drought or the flood. A tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Because you take good care of me. You take good care of me. You know what I need. Before I even ask a thing You hold me in your hands With a kindness that never ends I'm carried in your love No matter what the future brings Oh, you take good care of me The sun's not worried about the winter Cause soon it will pass The light's not thinking about the darkness Or the shadow it casts A heart that's planted in forgiveness Doesn't dwell in the past So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me Declare that Cause you take good care of me know what I need before I even ask a thing. You hold me in your hands with a kindness that never ends. I'm carried in your love no matter what the future brings. Lord, you take good care of me. Because I know there must be more. 
But I can't get past your kindness I know there's got to be more But I can't get past your goodness I know there must be more But I can't get past your kindness I know there's got to be more But I can't get past your goodness Cause you take good care of me Lord you take good care of me And you know what I need Before I even ask a thing You hold me in your hands With a kindness that never ends I'll carry in your love No matter what the future brings Oh you take good care I want everybody just to put your hands up like this just like this and close your eyes and we're gonna sing that I know there must be more but I can't get past your kindness I know there's got to be more but I can't get past your goodness that is a picture of someone so focused and so overcome by the kindness and the goodness of God I want us to choose to be that in this moment choose to be so grateful for his kindness and his goodness let's focus on that let's put our hearts our imaginations and our minds on the kindness of God this morning I know there must be more, but I can't get past your kindness. I know there's got to be more, but I can't get past your goodness. I know there must be more, but I can't get past your kindness. I know there's got to be more, but I can't say past your kindness I know there's got to be more but I can't get past your goodness I know there must be more but I can't get past your kindness I know there's got to be more but I can't get past your goodness Could you take good care of me you take good care of me You know what I need Before I even ask a thing You hold me in your hands With the kindness that never ends I'm carried in your love No matter what the future brings You take good care of me I want to say thank you I want to say thank you Oh, I say thank you Thank you for loving me, oh God Feel I deserve it. You see me as Jesus, cause I'm in Christ. You see us as Jesus, cause we're in Him. That's a reality. That's not a sacrilegious statement. We, when the Father looks at us, He sees His Son. So 
I know there must be more Cause I can't get past your kind Sing it out I know there's got to be more But I can't get past your goodness I know there must be more But I can't get past your kindness I know there's got to be more but I can't get past your goodness. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and just adore him. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. You know Satan hates praise. You know depression hates praise. You know when you begin to praise the Lord, you just been, see true praise and worship has to do with your focus. You can focus on him or focus on the problem. You can focus on a promise or you can focus on a problem. And he is faithful to his word. He is faithful to his word. Just begin to thank him. Sitting there thinking about Psalm 5, verses 11 and 12. It says, let all those who put their trust in thee rejoice. Wow. It says, let us rejoice. If, we're putting in my, if I put my trust in him, it says, let me rejoice. Wow. And it goes on to say, because he defends me. God's muscles are backing you up. It goes on to say, he surrounds you with the shield of favor. Isn't that awesome? You know, those promises are true. And I was looking at the Hebrew word in Psalm 70 where it talks about let God be magnified and he is your salvation. The word salvation means to be delivered from danger and into the benefits of the rescue. When you put your trust in him, God has promised to deliver you from danger and into the benefits of the rescue. How many know we live in a fallen world? Amen. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Oh, somebody else. I just wanted to say, it's been on my heart for a while. I have to come up here so I can see everybody. Um, you know, so many times we want to fix things with our mouths. So many times. That is such a temptation to do. But you know, you can do way more than that. You can pray. And that is a word for probably everybody in here. You can pray. Amen. You know, it's amazing what she just said. Isn't it amazing how oftentimes prayers are last resort instead of our first? Wow, that's amazing. Praise God. We're going to receive the offering. One clap. Praise God. <laughs> that's a 1% increase. <laughs> it's an opportunity. I love to tell people you don't have to give. It's an opportunity. If you want to give, give. As every man purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of constraint, for God loves a cheerful giver. I said, you know God loves a cheerful giver? I thought he loved everyone. He does. He values everyone. But there's a special love when we respond to him in faith. Do you know, and I'll say this to you, God's covenant love is different than the love he has for the world. Oh, God loves everyone. No, if you're born again, God has a special love for you. Hasid, the Hebrew word. Hasad, however you pronounce it, depends on. It literally means, like I use the example all the time. I can love your children, but I don't love your children like I love mine. Because there's a parental covenant that I have with my kids. You know, God has a special love for you. You can claim that. A lot of people don't claim that. Oh, God loves everyone. Stop saying that. He, it's true, he does. God, for God so loved the world, he values the world. But there's a special love he has for us because we're in covenant with him through his son. You are a son or daughter, gender is not the issue, if you're born again, if you receive Jesus. Isn't that good news? So right now, let's mix faith with our giving. Father, right now, we mix faith with our giving. We're believing for increase. Not so much for our thing, but for your thing, the kingdom of God. We want the kingdom of God to expand throughout the world in Jesus' name. And I curse the adversary's finances that he's using to fund the wicked things of this world and we decree that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just in Jesus mighty name and everyone that agrees with that amen
think we got a word. Despise not thy youth, right? Whenever you're ready. could have already come back before any of us were ever born. It's the grace of God that we're even born. Jesus could have already come back. The only reason Jesus hasn't come back is so that each of us could be born, so each of us could find Jesus, so each of us could be with him forever in heaven. He's like, I've got to wait. He's like, I have a plan for this person. I've got, got to make Chris, and I've got to make Jen, and I've got to make all these people so they can live with me forever. If I don't make them, I can't love them, and they can't be with me. So that's just the fact that you're like... He hasn't come back yet. It's just because he could have, but he, he waited. He's like, wait, they're not saved yet. I have to wait. God. Praise God. Awesome. Hallelujah. Now, I got to remember this. So the children, when you're dismissed, you will go that way. Everybody go like this. Okay, I remember now. And the next thing I got to remember is the teens are staying up. Jen's got to say something. I know Jackie's got something. Hold on. I'm trying to remember all this. If you give me stuff, you better help me. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I just want to mention the uh, autumn party again to everybody. It's going to be so much fun. So make sure uh, you try to put that on your calendar and try to make it. That's October 30th. Now, that's going to be in Versailles at BMI, okay? So lots and lots of fun. And people have asked me, are you going to dress up? Well, of course I'm going to dress up. We recommend clothes. <laughs> it's, it's just so much fun. Why would I not want to dress up? But, yeah, I think us and our whole family will probably dress up. We're gonna, you don't have to dress up, but, you know, it's fun. Sammy, you're always wanting to say something, aren't you? Aren't you? No. <laughs> Just wants, just wants to be like you. Just wants to be like you. So anyway, it's going to be fun, and you have to read all the the stuff we've got going on there. So um, some uh, time. That's a that's a good question. Steve, are you here? Steve Barhorst. Whenever he says whenever. So uh, whenever. Yeah. <laughs> what do you? Th what's a good time for people? Probably if we're going to have we'll snacks have and stuff. Maybe seven. Seven work. Six. six. He says six. Let's say six thirty. Let's compromise. 6.30, okay? 6.30. 6 6.32. Bring a snack. We're going to have a dessert bake-off. going to be fun, 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 okay? Uh, the 15th, that's where Jackie's. November 15th, right, Jackie? All right. See, Jackie, she needs a lot of people to sign up to bring good stuff. Sammy, are you going to, you got something? You just want to press buttons. I know you. I know you quite well. Okay, also let me, he's coming to help. Isn't that something? 
Uh, I want to uh, remind you we got voter guides out there. They don't tell you who to vote for. They, they're from uh, Citizens for Communi Community Values, and what they do is they tell you what the candidates stand for. And so you make your call. And so, uh, but they're out there as you walk out. Uh, also, Terry would be here. Terry just was with me. We were at two conferences. Jen, you might want to get him. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. I guess the children can be released, and I'll switch mics. The teens stay up. But Terry and I were just at a conference in uh, Colorado. We're actually at two conferences. I ministered at Activate 2020 in Fort Collins, and then we were at Andrew's conference. And guys, I want you to understand what's going on in our culture right now. Andrew Womack told us at the beginning of the minister's conference, if any of you want to go, you can go. There's no condemnation. Because the authorities in Colorado, the governor's a liberal, and uh, they've, uh, the Womack Ministries, and Care, they've already filed a lawsuit against Colorado's governor uh, and, and the government. We're trying to shut down religious, you know, they, they've taken this way beyond health. <laughs> this, is, this is definitely infringement upon religious freedom. And so they didn't know if the authorities were going to come in and shut the meeting down. We had no idea. The Teller County Sheriff, which Teller County is very conservative, he said, I ain't enforcing that. So uh, there's a, guys, we are not in a battle. Our, a battle's not coming. We're in it. We are in it. And I'm telling you, you need to vote and vote your values. Uh, it's very serious. This is not a game. The Bible says the, the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. I think that's Psalm 12, 8. You know, when the, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. I believe that's Proverbs 29, 2. So I'm just telling you, it's serious. And you don't have to like the personality of a political figure, but you need to look at what they stand for. Amen? That's what you need to look at. Amen? Seriously, pe people that say, no, no, that's political and biblical, they don't know what they're talking about. It's not political, it's biblical. You know, say, well, Paul didn't vote. Well, they didn't have that right. They had dictators, Nero, Trajan, Domitian, all those wicked people that were in charge. But we have a right to vote, and we need to exercise that right. So I encourage you to do that. I'm going to switch mics. Lord, are we on? Praise the Lord. I also want to tell you that I got someone, if I said the name, many of you would know it, and I'm really excited about it. They are so interested in my Revelation book. I'm so excited. Uh, they asked me, and they said, man, you got something. And so I'm real encouraged. I gave them a, a manuscript, which the book is done. I just don't know what to, what to do from here. Obviously, there's got to be a publisher, da-da-da. So I may even get with this guy. So I'm excited about it because uh, this person can help me. Uh, believe me, write a book. I've never wrote a book before, and it has to be on the book of Revelation. I'm thinking, yeah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> But, you know, the book's been stolen from us. I'm just going to tell you. I just look at it from a redemptive point of view, from what Jesus did on the cross, all that he accomplished through his death, burial, and resurrection. I actually make the book a revelation, or I shouldn't say I do. I believe God wants it to be the revelation of Jesus Christ as a revelation of Jesus Christ. Well, that's a great thought, isn't it? So pray about that because I really, you know, I, I'm not doing it for any other reason than I believe, number one, God has told me to and for, for the purpose of helping people. That's what it's all about. Terry would share here, but he's still recovering. He, we were out there for nine days, and believe me, it's brutal. It's wonderful, but it's brutal. I mean, because you're constantly going, you're constantly in meetings. You, so, and then you're, it's so, but it, it was wonderful. So, so but it was brutal. <laughs> Amen. Ah, uh, da da da. Oh, next week. Everybody say next week. My good friend, past our prophet, he operates as a prophet, a real one. Marcus Wick will be here. I'm excited. We was going to have our. Our little conference with Greg Moore, Daniel Emstead, and Marcus Wick, but uh, because they have some regulations in Colorado, and for the regular the staff teachers out there, they have something to the end of October. I don't understand it all, so we'll see what next year holds. Uh, our Zoom meetings I do with our ministers organization. I got, I'm lying. I got Daniel Emstead's in, uh, in uh, what is it in uh, November? I've pursued Kerry Pickett. Uh, hopefully Andrew in January, Bob Yandian, I'm, I told him, he said he would do it. Dwayne Sheriff said he'd help in any way he can. So this is exciting. I'm telling you, God's on the move. You see what the devil's doing? All you got to do is turn on news networks, whether it's Communist News Network. Don't turn on that one. It's a propaganda machine. Or I wanted to say Communist News Network. That's why I did that. <laughs> Anyhow, because that's what it is. So don't forget the voter guides. Also, uh, I'm excited. I got my all-time favorite track back called Where Will You Spend Eternity? 
I'm excited about this. I've been wanting, I don't know why I got away from this track, because it's so awesome, because this question right here opens up everything, and the track, of course, is wonderful. So I'm really excited about having my track back. I don't know why I ever quit using it. I have no idea. Some, you know, you grow, you change. But let's get into the message, if you do not mind, and I've got the very funny joke here that I think, I think it's funny, and if you don't laugh, I can't help that. But um, it's called a gender test for computers. Are you ready? Are you ready? There were some adults taking a computer science class at a community college, and after a few weeks of classes, their professor decided to have a bit of fun with them one day. He divided the men and women in his class and gave them each a project to take 10 minutes and determine which gender computers ought to be. After 10 minutes, both groups came back to share their discovery. The men went first and declared they voted unanimously that computers should be referred to in the feminine gender. The professor said, okay, share with me your reasons for making this determination. They had four points. Number one, first of all, they said computers should be referred to in the female gender because no one but their creator understands their internal logic. Number two, number two reason they should be referred to in the uh, female gender is because when computers speak to each other, they speak in code language only they and experts can understand. <laughs> number three reason they should be referred to in the feminine gender, every mistake you ever make is stored on their hard drive for later retrieval. <laughs> And all the men said, no, no, don't say nothing, men. All right, number four reason computers should be, should be referred to in the female gender is as soon as you commit to one, you end up spending half your paycheck accessorizing it. <laughs> don't laugh too hard because the women had the last word on this subject. They voted unanimously that computers must be in the masculine gender for the following reason. Number one, first of all, in order to get their attention, you have to turn them on. Some of you are getting this. Number two. All right. Number two reason uh, computers should be referred to in the masculine gender is because, secondly, secondly, they have a lot of data but still can't think for themselves. <laughs> number three reason computers should be referred to in the masculine gender, gender is because they are supposed to help you solve problems, but half the time they are the problem. <laughs> Woo. And number, last but not least, the number four reason Computers should be referred to in the masculine gender as as soon as you commit to one, you realize if you waited a little longer, you could have gotten a better model. <laughs> That's funny. I don't care who you are. Amen. All right. Let's get into the, to the uh, lesson. This is uh, part 10 of uh, the book of Galatians, our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Galatians. I love these verse-by-verse -verse studies. In fact, Bob Yandian kind of inspired me to do this. Uh, he said a couple years ago, he made the comment about how powerful it is. And I did talk to him a little bit. And I said, how much fun I've been having doing this or how much revelation I've been getting by studying it verse by verse. And he said, that's what happens. You start studying verse by verse and you start looking at verses. And man, it just, it opens a lot of things up. So this is part 10 of Galatians. Uh, and we're going to begin with chapter four. Can you believe it? We're basically half, we're crossing into the second half. This lesson's entitled Paul's Fear. Let me just give you a little background once again, uh, review. Uh, the book of Galatians was written to people, gen predominantly Gentile churches that were not per se Jewish believers. They were, they were born again, but they were being tempted by some legalists known as Judaizers who were coming in and telling them, if you really want to be right with God, you need to add certain tenets of the Mosaic law to your belief system. In other words, what you do. And, and we'll see this as we get into this lesson, as we get down to what I call Paul's fear. And I'll tell you up front, Paul's fear was that all that he had put into the Galatian Christians was now going to be a waste of time because they were reverting, were reverting back to self-trust instead of keeping their faith in God through Jesus. Amen. One, let me show it to you, and it's not in your outline, but a verse I absolutely love. Uh, 1 Peter 1.21. Just let's take a quick look at this, and then we will get into Galatians chapter 4. Who by him, this is referring to Jesus. The word by is the preposition dia. It means through him. Everybody say through him. Through him. We believe in God. Who through him we believe in God. Now, boy, that could camp on that. We need to believe in God through Jesus. And that's not just a casual head acknowledgement, but whenever I relate to God, it needs to be through the work of the cross, what Jesus did. Amen? That's what it means. It's through him I believe in God. 
You know, the Bible says in James chapter 2 and verse 19 that you, you believe in one God, you do well. The devils also believe and tremble. They acknowledge the existence of God. Believing in God, he's not talking about just acknowledging his existence. He's talking about putting faith in what he did for you and watch this as you. That's what it means to identify with his death, burial, and resurrection. His death was my death. I died in him. I was buried in him and I'm resurrected in him. That's what's so powerful. That's why the Bible says when you're joined unto him, you're one spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. But it's through him we believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory. Watch this. In order that. That your faith and hope might be in God. The reason we get bummed out is because we get our faith in ourselves. I tell people God's good even when you're not. Now that's not an excuse to not be good. It's excuse, it, when you see that, when you see frustration, recognize you're not looking at him, you're looking at you. See, it's the good fight of faith is to believe that the work is finished for your righteousness. That's a fight. And everything in its brother will... Let me, let me give an example. Are you ready? You know how hard it is to talk about prayer? Why is it hard? Or Bible study? Pick, fill in the blank. You know why? Because people think you're, call, you're talking about coming to an activity. God's not calling you to an activity. He's calling you to himself. Prayer is the vehicle. Bible study is a vehicle. Not to focus on the vehicle, but to focus on him. Can anybody hear this? Church is a vehicle. A good church should never substitute for your relationship with God, but supplement it. Can anybody hear this? This is powerful. This is life-changing. But see, so many, because of their crooked-hearted understanding, the light of the gospel goes in, and then it's twisted, and the rays come out green and purple in all various colors. Why? Because they don't understand. God's not calling me to activity. He's calling me to himself. And out of that himself, that's where I produce the fruit of the Spirit. This is the most difficult thing for people to hear, what I just said. That's why you got to keep going over and over and from every angle that you can come from for people to understand that. But see, your faith and hope won't be in God if you're not coming through Him. It'll be in you. See, and that's when people think, well, are you a Christian? Ah, well, you know, I don't go to church. I don't go to Who's talking about you? Are you born again? Are you truly born again? Now, it will manifest in fruit. Your works will line up if you're truly believing in God. But it's not the other way around. Hallelujah. All right, now, so that was what the book of Galatians was, is about. It's about people, believers who are being tempted to begin to put their faith not in what Jesus did, but in what they're doing for him. And that's the same today. It's no different. What's amazing about the written word of God, the Bible, is its relevance to every generation. It does not matter what generation you all know. We're past that. We got cell phones now. whoop de doo da day. There's nothing new under the sun, Ecclesiastes tells. Now go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. That's review. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. Now, now I say uh, that the heir, as long as he is a child, he differs nothing from a servant, though he's Lord of all. Now leave this up here. The heir, the one who is destined to inherit. And, and under the Old Testament, they were not born again. Did you know that? but yet they were believers. Did you know that? Do you know the disciples, when Jesus physically walked the earth, were not born again? Did you know that? But yet they were believers, right? Correct? You could say it this way. Though the heir, as long as he's a child, he differs no nothing from a servant, though he's Lord of all. In other words, all this stuff's available to him, but he's, he doesn't inherit it because he's still a child. How many of you know that some, in the natural, somebody could be an heir of a wealthy family, but as long as they're a child, they don't appropriate that inheritance on their own, if you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, but let me show you this. Go to Romans chapter 4, it's in your outline, and look at verse 17. I'm going to show you something. Do you know Abraham?